Hola, raga! What's up, guys? And welcome to Learn Italian Grammar Basics 4. Today, we are talking all about the imperfect tense of Italian. We use the imperfect tense in Italian whenever we're talking about actions that took place in the past, but they were actions that happened over and over again. They continually took place, or they could have been habitual. They were something that was a habit, let's say. What you'll notice about a lot of the translations from the imperfect tense in Italian into English is we're always going to find, for a lot of the time, used to somewhere in the translation because this is one of the ways in English that we express actions that took place in the past and they happened over and over again. It wasn't just an event that took place once and that was it. So let's get right into some conjugations so we can see how the imperfect tense actually works. So as you guys already know from having watched my past Learn Italian Grammar Basics videos, if you haven't seen them yet, the links are down below. There are three types of verb endings in Italian. A verb will either end in arre, erre, or ire. Depending on what a verb ends in is going to dictate how that verb is going to get conjugated in every verb tense of the language. So here are the verb endings for arre, are verbs, in the imperfect tense. For io, it's going to end in avo. Tu, avi. Lui and lei, ava. Or conservatively, traditionally, you can find lui and lei uh, written as egli or ella, respectively. Noi avamo, voi avate, and loro avano. Now, why did I just show you guys these things? Maybe you've never seen one of my videos before and you're confused as to why I just showed you these things. What I just showed you was the six, uh, really seven, pronouns of Italian that we'll be using for our conjugations, and then I showed you the verb ending. So in other words, for all are, otherwise known as airy verbs in Italian, when we take a verb such as mangiare, mangiare, which means to eat, if we want to conjugate it to talk about something such as I used to eat, take the verb mangiare, we're going to eliminate the A-R-E, and instead we're going to plug in that avo. Remember I just taught you that a few seconds ago? Io avo. We're going to plug that in instead. So the verb now becomes io mangiavo, or just simply mangiavo, because you don't always need the pronoun. And this one word, because it's now been conjugated from mangiare, means I used to eat. Now, in some cases, they can, this can simply just mean I ate, but it really depends on context and what you're trying to say. But then I'm also going to show you later on in a sentence how when you have two verbs in the imperfect tense in a sentence, how one of the verbs will have used to in a translation and the other won't. And it just really depends on the message that we're trying to get across. Because often when you're doing translations from one language into another, and especially into English, English has a different way of putting words together than in a Latin language or a romantic language such as Italian. So in order to get the proper message, Message across. Sometimes you you're gonna do a conju you're gonna do a translation in a not so directly literal you know word for word kind of thing. It's like what is the general message? But if that's too confusing, don't really worry about it too much. It's not. It's really not that big of a deal. So now let's finish up conjugating mangiare in the imperfect tense. So we had io mangiavo. That is I used to eat. Then we have tu mangiavi. Tu mangiavi. You used to eat. Then we have lui and lei mangiava. Lui, lei mangiava. Then we have noi mangiavamo. Noi mangiavamo. We used to eat. Voi mangiavate. Voi mangiavate. You guys or you all used to eat. And loro, otherwise known conservatively as essi, mangiavano. Loro mangiavano. They used to eat. The verb endings for the imperfect tense, the only things that change are when there's a V and then a letter after it. So for io, it'll be vo. For tu, it'll be vi. For lui, le, it'll be va. And depending on whether it's an are, ere, or ire verb, we'll tell you whether you need to put an A before the V, an E before the V, or an I before the V. If this doesn't make that much sense to you, don't worry about it. I'm just trying to show you a different way of how to remember the verb endings. Maybe it's easier for you just to remember vo, vi, va, vamo, vate, vanno, and then remember that depending on whether you're talking about an are, ere, or ire verb, that will tell you whether to use an A, an E, or an I before those verb endings. So let's conjugate a verb. The verb I prepared for you guys today is leggere, and leggere means to read. Here's how you conjugate it in the imperfect tense. Io leggevo, io leggevo, tu leggevi, tu leggevi, lui, lei leggeva, lui, lei leggeva, noi leggevamo, noi leggevamo, voi leggevate, voi Leggevate. Loro leggevano. Loro 
leggevano. And now, finally, let's move into the ire, the iri verbs. The verb I prepared for you guys today is dormire, and dormire means to sleep. Io dormivo. Tu dormivi. Lui, lei dormiva. Noi dormivamo. Voi dormivate. And finally, loro dormivano. And that is how you conjugate all regular irre, erre, and are verbs in the imperfect tense. But now let me show you actually how you can like apply this. How can I actually, you know, express something in the imperfect tense if, in Italian if I want to talk to someone in Italian or talk to an Italian and express that I used to do something in the past. So here's a silly little phrase I got for you guys. Piangeva sempre il bambino quando era piccolo. Piangeva sempre il bambino quando era piccolo. This phrase means the baby used to always cry when he was little. In this sentence, we have piangeva. Piangeva is the um, imperfect form of luile uh, for he or she. And we're talking about the baby and it's a boy. So we're saying piangeva. And then we have il bambino. This is how we know that it is a masculine uh, thing that we're talking about, that it's a boy and not a girl, because we're saying il bambino. La bambina means the baby girl. Il bambino means the baby boy. Quando means when. Era is essere in its imperfect form for lui and lei. Uh, so era means when he was or when he used to be. Piccolo means little or small. So this sentence means the baby used to always cry when he was little. And do you see how, like, the translation's, like, a little different? Like, the words are not all in the same places? That's just because in English we speak a little differently than they do in Italian. Literally, this is, it used to cry the baby when it was little. But we don't talk that way in English, you know what I mean? We talk saying, the baby used to always cry, not used to cry the baby. You, you see how that works? If this is too confusing yet again, don't worry about it, but I'm just trying for maybe some of our more advanced um, Italian speakers that are watching this video. Maybe you're more interested in seeing this kind of stuff to get a little bit more technical. So I'm just trying to show you the, the differences of how uh, we can actually apply what we're learning today and also learn some new verbs such as piangere, which means uh, to cry, and we're using it in the lui le form in the imperfect tense, piangeva, and you're learning new words like il bambino means the baby, quando means when, era, is the Louis Lay form of essere in the imperfect tense. And if you notice, I didn't say when he used to be little, I said when he was little. And that is just all about how it works when I'm saying that for the majority of the time, you'll use the imperfect tense as saying used to, but not always, because it really depends on the context. All right, guys, so I think that is enough for you guys today to take in uh, for this video. Thanks so much, as always, for tuning in and checking it out. Be sure to give it a thumbs up so that I know that you liked it, and I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao!